Hello everyone. My name is Alpa Rubala and we are going to learn mobile computing and wireless communication. Welcome to the lecture series of mobile computing and wireless communication. I am your instructor, Ms. Alba Rupala. So, today we are going to learn about Bluetooth. So, topics to be covered today is, first of all, we will learn about what is PicoNet, then after, what is ScatterNet, and then after, discovery of Bluetooth devices. So, first of all, what is PicoNet? A PicoNet is nothing but a collection of different different Bluetooth devices for communication purpose. Likewise, we can see in diagram that this is what the, this whole network collection of devices is what PicoNet. Okay, and the circle identifies the devices. So we are having total eight devices in which one device is named as capital M and other devices are named as capital S. So your capital M device is nothing but the master device and all the S devices are known as slave devices. So ultimately what we are having, we are having one master and total seven slaves in our PicoNet and this all are Bluetooth enabled devices. So what we are doing, so your one master will have one hopping sequence and to that hopping sequence all these slaves can be connected and that all will be synchronized to that hopping sequence only. So this is what a master slave configuration which is also known as the PicoNet. But that is not only the master slave combination, the PicoNet can have a different different other types of de devices also. Likewise, M stands for master, S uh, stands for slave. Then after P, that is park devices. Okay, and then after SB, which is standby devices. So if we take an example that suppose in a classroom there is one master device. Bluetooth device and there are seven different different Bluetooth devices connected to them to their single master device okay so all the other devices which is having the Bluetooth connection but not connected to that master will be referred to as the park devices okay and the standby device that means they are having the capability or uh, Bluetooth uh, device transfer, right? But they are not even started yet. So this is what the standby device. So we can see that all the slaves are synchronous with the master hoping sequence. But the park devices are not synchronous with the master hoping sequence. But we are having the maximum capacity that one will be master and seven Maximum 7 can be slave. So if any park device want to communicate with that master, then they need to replace the any of these slave. Okay. So that replacement will be according to the synchronization of hoping sequence. So we can say that we are having one master which is having 48 bit unique identification number. And that number will be given to all the slaves for the synchronization of open sequence. Then after if we can say the slave, so we are having total 7 number of slaves. How we are calculating this 7 number? Because we are giving each and every device in our Bluetooth PicoNet unique identification. The master is uniquely identified by 48 bit unique identification. And the slaves are identified by 3-bit active member address, that is AMA, 3-bit active member address, okay. So according to that active member address, 3-bit address, we can have total 8 devices, okay. But from that 8, 1 is master and remaining 7 is slaves. And same as we can have 200 above park devices. Because we can give the park member address as 8 bit park number address. That is PMA, park member address. Okay. 
So we can have 200 or more part devices and we can have any number of standby devices because we are not even though uh, giving the name to that device. Okay, we are not giving any identification number to the standby devices. So all are connected as a Bluetooth PICO net network. Okay, so we can say that we, if we want to communicate by Bluetooth devices, then our device which is Bluetooth enabled can be master or it can be slip. Okay, whenever it is needing to be master, it can be converted to master. Whenever it is needing to be a slave, it can be converted into slip. Now, next topic is scatter net. Here you can see that we are having two different PicoNet, PicoNet 1 and PicoNet 2. And the PicoNet 1 is having total 4 slaves, PicoNet 2 is also having total 4 slaves in which one slave is common to both the PicoNet. So whenever we are having this kind of condition, at that time we can say that this is what scatternet network. Okay, the advantage of having scatternet network, your Bluetooth range will be increased. In which one device is common to both the PicoNet. So, ultimately we are forming the scatternet. So, how we can say that this particular slave, the joint or the combined slave is right now a part of PicoNet 1 or PicoNet 2? So, whenever the combined slave wants to communicate to the PicoNet 1, it will synchronize the uh, hoping sequence according to the master of PicoNet 1. If this slave wants to communicate to the PicoNet 2 master, then it needs to change the synchronization or hoping sequence according to the PicoNet 2. So this is the whole fundamental of PicoNet and scatternet. We can also see that you can see that in diagram the PicoNet is having master and two slaves. Scatternet is having different different PicoNets and each and every PicoNet will have master and there will be one combined slave. Okay, that will be common to both the PicoNet or three of the PicoNet. So this is the diagram of PicoNet and Scatternet. Now the next topic is discovery of Bluetooth devices. How we can discover Bluetooth device? So first of all, we all know, all know that whenever we are, we want to communicate by two Bluetooth devices. Suppose we, I am having one mobile phone and another mobile phone. Both are uh, Bluetooth enabled, right? First of all, what I need to do? First of all, I need to start the Bluetooth to both of them. Okay? Suppose I want to transfer one movie, movie XYZ from the mobile one to mobile two. So what I will do, first of all, I will start both the mobiles, Bluetooth, right? Then after, I will, I need to, the mobile one need to find out the mobile two in Bluetooth network, in PicoNet network, okay? So for, uh, so that will be what uh, pairing, okay? So before that, the discovery must be done. So the Bluetooth will send one identification range message and according to it that uh, another device will give the signal okay now after detection that uh, there is a next step that which is called as pairing so both the devices if they have previously communicated with each other then pairing is not required because they both devices are already paired but if the both devices are transferring with each other for the first time, at that time the pairing is very important or the first step. So how we can pair two Bluetooth devices? So there will be one pin which will be of 1 to 16 bytes. Okay, and that pin will be common to both the devices. In previous years, the when the Bluetooth was not that much of good uh, in a security manner, at that time the pin was fixed. It was four times in. Okay, but nowadays we can change our pin. Whatever the master is sending as a pin, the next device must be connected or paired with the same. Suppose I am writing one, two, three, four as a pin to the mobile one. Then the mobile two must have the pin one, two, three, four. Or then and then only two devices can be paired. Okay, so after pairing, 
I we are giving the authentication link key. The link key is generated by the pin, okay, and one random number that will be common to both the device, okay. One pin and random number that will be common to the both device. And by this, we uh, by E2 algorithm, we are generating the link key which is of 128 bits. Okay, now again, this is what first step after pairing the authentication is must then suppose we are uh, we are communicating or we are transferring the data with that both device for the second time at that time we are not pairing that but we are we can have another process which is the authentication okay another process which is known as the authentication if the devices are already paired then first step will be the authentication so in authentication what we what we need that particular link key is already stored in your paired devices permanently. Okay, so at the authentication time, we will collect that link key and we will send some random number to both the device. And at that time, by E3 algorithm, we can generate the encryption key. Okay, so now this key, uh, if this two key is common. Okay, if this two key is common, then we can say that this both devices are already paired and authenticated. Then after, when we are transferring the data, it must be secure. So for the security purpose, we are transferring the data. It must be secure. So for security purpose, what we are doing? We are generating one payload key. So we are having encryption key of 128 bits. We are transferring that encryption key to the key string generator and that will generate the payload key. Now we are XORing our original data with the payload key and getting our cipher data. And that cipher data will be transferred to the one mobile to another mobile or one little device to another little device. So this is the whole process of discovery of little devices in which if first time communication is there then the process step will be pairing encryption and ciphering if we are communicating for the second time if the devices are already paired then at that time the step will be authentication encryption and ciphering so we learned today about bluetooth piconet scatternet and how we can discover the bluetooth devices thank you we will meet in our next lecture